Yo, what's good? It's your boy Candyman in the building. Y'all already know what it is. Y'all listening to the Candy Shop in 51 countries. Y'all watching Candyman TV on YouTube. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment. I got a very special guest today, Tatiana. She is from Cleveland, Ohio. Got a lot of Cleveland, got a lot of Ohio people been coming to the podcast lately, y'all. You know what I'm saying? All love to Ohio. She's a YouTuber, entrepreneur, producer, clothing designer, and a lot more. Tell 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 everybody a little bit about yourself. Hi everybody, I'm Tatiana. I'm 19 years old. I am from Cleveland. I moved to Canton, Ohio, when I was about 12 years old, and I actually did transition back to Cleveland for a little bit, and then I ended up moving back here when I got my first apartment. So I am getting a little adjusted here. I've been here for about a month now, and it's okay. Just learning to take responsibility as an adult and as a woman. So it's been a little challenging, but it's been good overall. I am a YouTuber, so definitely subscribe to my channel and also subscribe to his channel as well and show him some support. Um, I do make clothing. I just started um, about a couple weeks ago. I am still learning some things. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a little challenging making clothes. Uh, especially from scratch. I did actually just make a piece um, out of a dress. I turned it into a two-piece set. So it was it was fun. Um, I do plan on making a lot more pieces and selling pieces custom-made by me always. And I actually just started producing not that long ago either. And I've just been, you know, just uh, testing the waters, trying to expand my talents and see what else is out there for me and what else interests me. I am a singer. Um, a lot of people don't know that about me. I do sing a little bit. Um, yeah, I've just been trying to expand my talents a little bit more. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it about me so far. Okay, okay, yeah, man. Multiple talented, you know what I'm saying? You're diverse, you got a lot going on. What, what did, did you get into making clothes before the music? Or how did, how did, how did that go about? Making clothing, it, um, it kind of came to me um, because of COVID and stuff, and a lot of places were shut down, and I just, I love fashion. I'm really into um, vintage, um, like vintage clothing, you know, styles from, you know, the, the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, early 2000s. I really just love, like, fabric and anything that's, you know, that's just beautiful and that looks nice to the touch. Um, and producing, I really wanted to start producing music because this girl had asked me if I could um, produce her song. And um, I was like, I have no experience in producing whatsoever. But I do have a little bit of experience um, in broadcasting. I did actually go to a broadcasting school for a little bit, but I ended up dropping out because I was like, I'm not sure if this is what I want to do anymore. So I did um, take a break from that, but I had got back into it because I'm like, this is where my passion is. This is where my heart is, and this is what I want to do. So the producing thing came in for me because I love music. I love all types of music um, from R&B, jazz, blues, um, anything that has a really good sound to it and definitely has a lot, a lot of meaning to it, especially because I don't like listening to music that just doesn't have meaning to it. It's just kind of pointless to me. But um, I was just kind of like, you know, testing some beats and seeing what, you know, caught my attention. And I'm really into like old school type of beats um, from like L.A., like, you know, the East Coast, West Coast. That's how I was like, yeah, like I, I this is what I want to do. And I, I'm still learning and stuff. Um, and I think what kind of set me apart from most producers is that I'm a woman and I don't really see too many um female producers like do you know any female producers i i don't know too many but i know a few but i don't know that many honestly yeah and that's what kind of made me want to change the game a little bit because i'm like well i don't know too many um female especially black female um producers so i kind of wanted to um give people an insight of like wow like this is interesting like i want to see what this girl has to offer so yeah, just, you know, just seeing what's out there for me and seeing what interests me. And that's definitely music. Music has always been my thing. Um, I used to be in a choir in um, middle school and high school, and I used to be in a church choir. Um, 
rapping wasn't my thing. A lot of people ask me, do I rap? I'm like, no, nah, I don't. I'm not a rapper, but I do sing and stuff. So, um, yeah, like music is my heart. Like I love music. Um, I can dance a little bit. I used to be a part of a dance team when I was living in Cleveland. Um, it was like something small and local, but it was still something that I did. And um, it really just caught my interest and in just music and um, just anything that has to do with art. I feel like music is definitely an art. And um, I don't see myself being an artist, but I do see myself helping other artists out. And that's what I want to do. Okay, have you, uh, who, who is your, who, we, go, we can go back to fashion real quick. Who is, do you have any like influences that influenced you to do fashion or is it just, you just love all type of generations of fashion? Is it just the generations or the, or is it a specific person or people? Um, I don't really have a specific, I just, I just know that. I look at all different types of fashion. I don't really just limit myself to one person or group of people. It would be a lot more um, easier to like figure out what my influence is. I just know that fashion has always been my thing and I'm um, just putting different pieces together. And like, like I will go to like different stores and see how different stores operate and how um, like the diversity and the um, inclusivity and just seeing how um, different brands and stuff operate. And the thing that kind of makes me look at certain brands different is the um, mainly the diversity. Because um, mainly growing up, I used to see a lot of um, a lot of white, mainly white um, companies, you know, promoting white women. And I'm just like, where's the diverse? And I'm like, well, you know, like, where's you know where's the black women like where's you know just different you know people and stuff like that and um nowadays a lot more brands are starting to get a lot more diverse and um you know promoting black women and stuff because like you know back in like the, the 50s or 60s when black women wanted to do certain things they were told no and um it's just kind of unfair but i like how some brands are starting to branch out and starting to promote plus size women um women and people of different um ethnicities and, and uh, cultures and stuff like that and that's what i mainly focus on because it's like it doesn't have to be just one group that wants to do something i feel like everyone deserves a chance to prove themselves to other people so um i don't really like have a specific but um yeah i just mainly focus on everything I, i'm more of a visual so it's like i have to see what another brand is doing and i can kind of give my feedback of that company or brand and okay now, because I, when I was on your Instagram, I figured you modeled too because you're very, you dress, you dress, you should always be fly, I see. You know what I'm saying? You dress Thank real you. nice. And have you, ever, have you ever thought about modeling too as well? Or does that ever come yeah, to Yeah, I actually was looking into it not that long ago. And um, I was actually on a Zoom call. It's for this company called Nine Nine. And basically what that service is, it's not... Um, a corporation it's a service and what that is they like help young not young talent but like they help from ages i want to say three to like 86 i want i want to say and they pretty much like get information um about a person um that wants to either do acting or modeling and i kind of wanted to do a little bit of both but I didn't have the money to like actually um, sign up for it. So I kind of like turned away from it a little bit, but um, I do want to do modeling actually. Um, I've been in a couple photo shoots. It, it was like something like for my birthday or for like an event um, and stuff like that. But I actually do want to do modeling. I feel like that's something that would interest me as well. Yeah. Cause Fat, if you got fashion, modeling, producing, that's really all, that's really almost in the same area, just a yeah, different field. Is. You know, that's good though. Like, 
Yeah, I think you really should like, cause you, you really should head on doing that too. Cause you can make it far. Cause I see like your material is consistent. You always constantly move, you promote yourself right. You're right, you're really on the right path for real, for real. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm, I'm constantly always um, finding ways to reinvent myself. I'm always changing my looks. Like I don't like being the same person. It's like stagnation is the worst. Like I don't like being stagnant um like no change no growth i don't i don't like that like i always find ways to like make myself look different and feel different and um whether that's trying new hairstyles piercings hair colors um just things i wouldn't normally wear but you know just like putting it with something that i would wear and just making it a look and like that's where my heart is okay so what do you have a a favorite generation of style like the 70s 80s 90s like which which one would you consider being your favorite or do you have like a top three my top three would be um definitely the 70s um the 60s and the the early 2000s Man, the early 2000s, that was the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, what a, what a time to be alive. I was young, but I, like, I always used to see, like, 106 of Park and, like, different TV shows, and I would see how, like, big artists like, like, um, Aaliyah, um, TLC, and um, different um, groups and artists, and I would see how they would dress and how they um, talk to people like in interviews and stuff. Like I pay attention to gestures and stuff and I'm like, wow, like I really like look up to this person and like the way that they carry themselves, the way that they talk to their fans and communicate with their, um, their people. So yeah. Um, definitely the seventies though, cause the seventies was a time where everyone was so free. It was like an era of like psychedelics and, um, LSD and, just different stuff like that and um i just loved how like um what's her name um i forgot her name but she was like a really like iconic figure and she used to have her hair like like in a like what is it like it's like a swoop type of hairstyle it's like um farrah fawcett you know who farrah oh fawcett yep is? yep yep like mm -hmm. how she would wear her hair and the way she would dress it was like so iconic to me and I'm like, wow. And and Jimi Hendrix, as, as y'all can see, um, love Jimmy. Um, it was just the era of people just being free and um, standing up for what they believe in. Love that as well. Um, I just think that was a, a era where I would have enjoyed being in for sure. So. Okay. And now, but now back to producing. Uh, what what's your what's your style of producing like? What. What do you or what 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 kind of um, genre would you mostly be producing in? You said the genre. Yeah, like what genre would you? Um, like R and B, um, hip hop, of course. Um, like pop trap. I think pop, like pop rock trap, is like really cool because it's like you can um add sounds that's like pop you know they give it like a fresh funky type of beat but also something that's modern nothing that's like too um like out of style i feel like nothing ever goes out of style you just have to make it original and make it for someone um that will actually listen to it so definitely um r&b um hip-hop jazz definitely jazz um i love um, like the, the saxophones, um, saxophones are like my, my favorite. I, I love saxophones and I love like trumpets and stuff. And, um, definitely, um, a little bit of orchestra. I feel like orchestra is, um, definitely beautiful. Like I love the strings and the hearts and, um, the violins and stuff. I think that's really beautiful to add that, you know, with a little bit of hip hop and R and B. And I think like you got you a good, a good sound, um, definitely. So. Yeah, I think like those four or five, um, I think those will um, definitely be an interest. Like I like lofi, like lofi type of beats as well. Um, I think like more chill and laid back, like stuff you can listen to while you're um, laying down or, um, you know, just like reading or, you know, just studying or something. I feel like something that you can just chill to and not nothing too 
too hectic or too crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I I'm not gonna lie, I'm a big guy on orchestras and um in in like music. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, it's just something about, like, when you hear all the instruments come in with the producing sounds. And especially if it, uh, one of my favorite ones is the flute. Like, like when I hear that flute, this, and, you, and you gotta have, you gotta put, you gotta put that flute in right. If you don't put it in right, it just don't sound right. But that flute is just, I be hearing certain trap beats and they be doing like, like the baby be using the flute a lot. Man, I'd be like, that is so hard. Like that, <laughs> that's one yeah, of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Like some of his, like some of his beats is actually pretty cool. Like the um the song that that was kind of like inspired by um I think SpongeBob, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think that beat, like the flute. Yeah. I think like the flutes and the clarinets are like something that's like so underrated. Like I think people focus more on like stuff that's like um uh, like bass like i think people like a lot of bass like some like some people like music that that's obviously gonna make you feel good um but they like more of a harder type of beat like i like car beats but not all the time i just feel like it kind of gets old it's like where's the originality like like where right. is the you know like something simple like something i can chill to like you know, you don't want to listen to something like that's hard all the time. Like you're gonna get tired of it. Yeah, because that, that's how some of my people's is like. They love just just the straight trap twenty four seven. I like trap, but oh, it's just yeah, like nah. I got it. I gotta switch it up. I gotta switch it up. Like I I listen to I, I, my my music is so diverse because I went to a um because I went to a I went to a white school most of my life from like first through like eighth grade, so. They they was playing. I was born in ninety two, so you know they. I've seen I've seen the prime Britney Spears. Like a lot of people don't know this, but Britney Spears was the black Beyonce at one point. I mean hey, the white. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Lie. Not the not the black. Britney. I meant the white Beyonce. She was the white Beyonce at one point. Like you couldn't. Oh, it, yeah, you to, couldn't say movie. nothing bad about Britney. But you've seen her performance. You've seen the way she sung. You've seen the way she. She was just good at what she was just elite at everything she did. I remember, I remember when the yeah, Backstreet Boys, in sync, all of them. Yeah, I feel like. Um, I'm sorry. Could you the audio? Your audio broke up. Could you say it again? My bad. Um, like with Britney Spears, I feel like Britney, like she always had a deep voice. Like I was watching this video of her, like from when she was like maybe I want to say like between the ages, like five to seven and her voice was deep and I, I don't like how the industry and like certain people around her made her voice go up like that's not how she sings but Britney what she is talented don't get me wrong oh, yeah. I just didn't like how they try to make her have this image of you know the baby voice and all of that like I'm just you know, but I love Britney Spears Britney Spears is an is a, is a icon like, like come on now like like any um like pop like any pop artist like like Taylor Swift or like Selena Gomez or like Dua Lipa like I feel like their inspiration would probably be Britney Spears because Britney Spears kind of like set it off especially like in the nineties and the early two thousands and definitely in the in the mid two thousands as well. Oh yeah, for sure. Like free Britney Spears, by the way. Yeah, free Britney. Yeah, she she deserves so much better. Big facts. Yeah, so have you um, have you ever... Because I remember you was talking about you wanted to leave Ohio because I don't blame you because there's a lot more to life. Have you traveled a lot and seen uh, different type of places that you think you might want to go to? Um, I haven't really traveled a lot because mainly of like financial issues and stuff. Like I was homeless for a little bit, so I couldn't do what I wanted to do. And um, it was just kind of really tough, but... Um, I have actually went to a little bit like I've been to New York. I haven't been to New York City. I've always wanted to go to New York City because that's like the state of fashion. Like that's where um, a lot of the modeling agencies and um, just a lot of different like fashion shows and stuff like that's where that is. So I would love to go to New York City and like just see how they work and, um, you know, possibly be a part of something that's there. 
Um, I've always wanted to go to um, Cali. Cali, too. Cali is a good place, especially, like, for networking as well. But when I was in Cleveland, I was there for about, like, almost two months. And um, my dad was kind of strict. He kind of, like, told me I couldn't do the things I want to. Mind you, I'm 19 years old. So um, kind of being told what to do. Like, I'm my own person. Like, I, I'm just, I'm so original and, and just um, so genuine. And I'm a free spirit at heart. So I don't like being told what to do. Um, and that's why I'm self-employed. Because it's like, I, I can't take no crap from bigger companies and bigger, you know, stuff like that. Like, I can't work for someone else's dream and I can't deal with someone else telling me how to live. It's just, it's not me and it's not going to work because, because I'm a Taurus and, and Tauruses are stubborn as hell. Like we don't like being told what to do. Um, I just, I'm my own person. I don't, I'm just, I'm, I'm original and I don't like, you know, taking crap from nobody. So, um, I couldn't do what I wanted to do when I was in Cleveland, but I did actually meet up with a few people. I actually uh, met this lady. Her name is Evelyn. And um, she has her own businesses. Um, it's called One Scene Productions. And um, she helps um, people plan for, like, projects that they want to do and stuff like that. Um, I actually did end up meeting with a few people and stuff. So it was cool and everything. I just couldn't do what I wanted to do. I kind of felt like it was, like, restrictions. And um, it kind of upset me. But I'm like, everything happens for a reason. So I can't you know, be mad when something isn't working on my timing, because it's not about my timing, it's about the universe's timing and divine timing, so whatever will happen for me, it'll happen naturally, so I won't have to necessarily, like, I'll have to do a little bit, like, work hard for what I want, but it's like, when when something is meant to come, it'll, it'll come, so, um, yeah, just a few setbacks and, and, and distractions and stuff, but I feel like I'm slowly but surely getting to where I want to be, and that's kind of why I uh, expanded my talents. Cause it's like I, I want to be, I want to be seen, I want exposure, and I want people to see what I have to offer. And even if I don't lightly have the the idea of how to approach people, like I know how to approach people. But it's like sometimes, like, my head can be all over the place, and I'm like, uh, I'm nervous. But, um, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because I, uh, I remember um, when you said earlier about you being homeless, I've been homeless a few times, and it, it definitely ain't no joke. Like, yeah, I've it's been, just not fun. Yeah, it's just crazy. Yeah, I kind of like. Um, I was kind of, like, embarrassed a little bit because it's, like, I've been doing YouTube for a year, almost two years, and, um, see, like, I had to kind of explain to YouTube, like, what was going on. Like, I was going through some issues with my mom. We weren't seeing eye to eye. Like, she would kick me out constantly. Like, I had moved out when, um, when I had first turned 18, and, um, I was gone for, like, four months. And then I had moved back in with her, and then that's when stuff started hitting the fan, and I was, like, getting into it with her and stuff, and... I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Like, I, I had invested, like, $200 in, um, to my YouTube equipment, and that was, like, one of the biggest investments I made. And I felt like it was a waste because I couldn't use my equipment. I couldn't do what I wanted to do because, like, my mom was constantly kicking me out and stuff, and I couldn't, you know, do, like, podcasts with people. I couldn't link up with people for collaborations. It, it, was, it was so much, and it's like now that I have my own, my own space it's like i can do what i want to do now i just have to um figure out you know just to balance everything you know just to um you know work with different people and um, just networking but um yeah being homeless is not fun and um yeah just like telling youtube just a different side of me it was kind of like inspiring to me because it's like it's not something that i would normally do but it's like sometimes when, when you have a following, like you have to let your, your following know like what's really going on. And it's like if your following really genuinely supports you, they won't judge you. So I um, made a video and I kind of like cleared the air and kind of like told everybody um, what was going on. And um, they completely understood. And I got so much support from everybody. And um yeah, like, it's just, it's really um, inspiring to, like, know that I'm not the only person that has been through being abandoned and, 
and being homeless and stuff like that. It's just, it's really cool knowing that there's someone out there in this world. There's like 7 billion people and, and growing. Like, we're losing people and there's more people coming into this world. But it's like, there's someone out there that can relate to you. On a, on a different level that you wouldn't even know that that could you, that you could experience and it's like someone is out there going through way more stuff than you are so it's like you have to humble yourself and um just realize that it's not just you that's going through something that's hard facts big facts it's always good to it's always good to keep your head up strong especially during times like that because just, just there, yeah, like you said, being on the streets, that ain't no fun. Like, I remember I was, I, when I was in Vegas, I was homeless. And I remember the first night that I, that I was going to be like officially on the streets. I just, I went to the dispensary, caught me a little, little pre-roll. I was sitting on the corner, on the sidewalk near, near, near the place where I was working at. I just started smoking and then it just hit me. I'm like, I'm really like, it's it's all bad like i couldn't and i put my pride aside i even called people from home and i knew it was bad because they couldn't even help me so i was like yeah i'm just gonna have to just do my thing here till till things get better but stay consistent and, and you know things got better you know it was just it was a, it was dark it was a dark time it was a dark depressing time but you know god wouldn't put you through nothing you couldn't handle but, yeah for sure like i know when i was homeless i wasn't homeless for like a long time but I was homeless enough to where like I had to figure out where I was gonna go and like me I do have family but it's like with me doing tarot and stuff it's like in the black community that's seen as a threat and it's seen as evil so like my mom wasn't accepting of what I did and my, the more my mom would say certain things to other people and I'm not bashing her by the way like it was just like the more that she made me look like this bad person, the more that she was projecting her negative energy onto me, she was making me look like I was the bad guy when really I was the victim. So um, that that's why I was homeless. Like whenever I tried to reach out to certain family members, they were like, no, I can't help you. Or like your mom like needs to know where you are. Like, like I'm grown. Like I don't need no one trying to tell me what, what's good for me it's like if it's not genuine if it's not helping me or benefiting me it's like i don't need your opinion so like when i try to reach out to close people like they they ignore me um so it was it was so hard like i tried to reach out to like homeless shelters they told me it was nothing that they could do like um i couldn't get in there unless i had a child and i'm like well i don't have any kids so that's what made it even more harder because like when you have a kid or when you have kids that's when certain uh, different opportunities are open for you but it's, it's just me and I'm only 19 so it's like it, it was just it's so many things that I couldn't do and I'm just like well like I'm responsible I'm trying to prove these people wrong like I'm trying to you know prove myself and let people know that I have something to give and it just was not working and um, I just always kept my head held up high and it's like it, it was it was so hard like so freaking hard like i think i'm the only person that i know personally that has been through so much but i never let it break me like i've always been resilient and i've always tried to be selfless and it it worked and and um it's like the more that i'm getting established it's like i never forgot where i came from it's like you can never forget where you come from because it's like it could be you again so it's like you have to really take a good look at life and reality and be like you know like i'm not in the situation no more but i have to realize that it could be me again so it's like you, you really have to take a good look at yourself and be like well i'm in a better place but never forget but also don't let it hold you down and don't let it um don't let it take over you it's like when you let your past haunt you your, your past is your past it, it already happened like it's nothing you can do it's out of your control and i think that's where a lot of people tend to like fall in depressions because they're, they're like stuck on their past and stuck on stuff that that just couldn't be done like you know it's like it happened already it's it's not your fault some things are just happening just to happen and sometimes it's not for us to know but um 
regardless of everything, like, it, it always made me a stronger person. And um, that's what I really admire about myself, that I can always bounce back from what hurt me. And, and I never let it affect me in my future. And that's why, like, I'm doing all of these different things to, to really show people what I'm worth. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. See, I'm glad you, you, you're strong minded because a lot of people, they, they just, a lot of people just don't know the struggle for real. <laughs> they they I mean, just, they don't know. Whew. It's like when, when, when you come from certain backgrounds, it's like you're not used to certain things and, and to certain things kind of shape you into who you are. But certain, certain things isn't meant to shape you who you are, it's to build your character. And, um, Really, it's like you. It's like you can't grow and you can't go on to the next chapter of your life if you're constantly rereading the pages of the chapter that you're not in no more. It's like you have to move forward. Any last minute uh, motivational words for the people? Um, honestly, I feel like whatever y'all want to do do it don't don't listen to what no one has to say to you don't listen to anyone that's telling you that you can and you telling you that you can't do something because it's like the world is yours anything that you want man like you all you got to do is believe that you can do it speak positive words of affirmations and letting yourself know like you know things are not looking the way that I want them to look right now, but it's like the more that I believe and the more that I keep putting in the work, like the like the sky is the limit, man. Like when when people used to say the sky is the limit, they were not lying. Like anything that you're manifesting, anything that you want, all you gotta do is just believe that you can do it. Believe in yourself and believe in the the measures. Like no one said that this life was gonna be easy, but it's like as long as you have the idea of life it is it's constantly moving it's constantly changing and it's like whatever you want to do and you're telling yourself that you can't do it it, it, it like you're, you're pretty much just pushing yourself away from what you're supposed to be doing and you're giving the opportunity to somebody else so always work hard for what you want and and don't forget where you come from because where you come from made you to be who you are today oh yeah so um, tell tell everybody your uh, social medias again and your podcast too as well. My my Instagram is Tatiana Marshall. It's T A T I Y A N A M A R S A S H E L L. My uh, my YouTube is the same name as my Instagram. No underscores, no periods, no nothing. Make sure y'all go subscribe. Uh, my I just made my um, producer YouTube page. It's called. Um, tati made this underscore so it's tati made this and um yeah that's pretty much it i do have a facebook as well if y'all want to go add me on my facebook it's the same name like all my social medias are the same so make sure y'all go subscribe and also subscribe to him he's amazing at what he does and thank you so much for the opportunity it, it means a lot well, thank you for coming on the show i really appreciate it yep i'm gonna definitely um share your stuff and um subscribe do you have a youtube by the way yep Candyman tv i can send you i can send you all my info uh when yep, we get yep. done send me all your information i'm gonna I'm shout you out and support you oh yeah for sure thanks appreciate it yep thank you so much no problem y'all make sure y'all go ahead check our social medias out make sure you like share subscribe there's more episodes to come and y'all have a wonderful day